Met Global Opera Summer Campers. Met, wait, I said it wrong already. Met Opera Global Summer Campers. There we go. Oh my gosh, everyone. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Camp Counselor Dan. You can call me Spider Dan. You can call me maybe. You can call me anything you want to. Welcome to week one of the Met's Global Opera Summer Camp. I'm so happy to have all of you here. As I mentioned, my name is Camp Counselor Dan. My pronouns are he, him. I am a middle-aged white guy with silvery black hair. I've got a mustache and green eyes. Um, oh, today, oh, I'm, I've got white uh, headphones. I've got the wire in because I feel like the sound is better and New York is really loud. That's where I am coming in from today. I'm in the East Village of New York City, um, the unceded ancestral lands of the uh, Lenape people. And I uh, am wearing, this is a special shirt. You're gonna love this one. Um, I'm wearing not a Met Opera t-shirt today. I am wearing a Bobcat Choir t-shirt. And you may, may know this, I don't think you do, that the Bobcat Choir is the choir that is under the baton of Dr. Emily Sines, yesterday's camp counselor who taught us so much amazing, amazing facts and the story of Lab OM. So if you guys, uh, I feel very lucky to be sporting a Bobcat Choir shirt today from the good people, the good students and singers in Fort Worth, Texas. So um, I'm happy to be here with all of you today for an arts and crafts camp spectacular with one of my favorite people of all time, pretty much. She's a puppeteer. She is a, a professional performer. She just did a like multi-week outdoor extravaganza where she she manipulated a giant Andy Warhol puppet. I mean, who does this? What a life. She's also a Pilates instructor, which is pretty cool. So she's got a lot going on. We're going to spend some time today with camp counselor, Ms. Kayla, and I'm going to get her in here in a sec, in just a second. But first, I want to introduce a brand new camp counselor to all of you today. I think some of you may have met them at our camper orientation last week, but I wanna bring them in because they are so rad and so fun. And they're helping us out um, with so many elements in camp and the Google Classroom and, and uh, making sure that um, our Spanish speaking friends have access to some of the instructions in Espanol. Uh, I'm gonna bring Camp Counselor Sophia in here. Hey, Camp Counselor Sophia. Hi, hello. It's so nice to meet you all. It's so great to see you. And I understand today that you are coming to us live from where exactly? I am coming from you live from the education office inside the Met Opera House. So I'm on the rehearsal floor. So if you hear music coming back, if you hear there's an elevator right here, there's a lot of people moving big equipment, there's dancers. Um, so oh my gosh. it's an exciting place to be. Really it exciting. is a very exciting place to be. Thanks for holding the fort down while I'm here uh, doing the camp thing. And you've already gotten your camp, uh, your camp nom de guerre here. Look, you're super <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> Hi. Oh, and Victoria says, muchas gracias uh, por traducir. Hi, de nada, un placer, Victoria. Oh, um, Sophia, for our friends, uh, just as an offering of accessibility, would you just describe yourself for our friends and tell us how we should address you? Of course. So um, I am Sophia. I use any pronoun, so feel free. I have, right now, I have brown skin. I am Hispanic. I'm Latinx from Peru. So if any of you are Peruvian or from Latin America, I'd love to hear it in the chat. Um, I have short hair above my ears. I'm wearing a orange pink shirt and my hair used to be blue. It is now almost entirely out. So it's this green gray color at the moment. It's really um, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. the background is white over here. Oh my gosh, great. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for monitoring the chat for us and for all of your, oh, uh, uh, here we go. Saludos desde Argentina. Thank you, Diego. Uh -huh. oh my gosh, well, great. Um, and Sunny wants you to know, Sunny has short hair too. So there we go. Short hair gang. Short hair mm -hmm. gang. Listen, it's the only gang I've ever belonged to. <laughs> 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 all right, so Sophia, I would love for you to hang out for a quick second to meet our teaching artist for today, Camp Counselor, Miss Kayla. Can we get Kayla in here? Let's do it. Let's Woo! do it. Kayla, hi. Oh, ah, oh hi. Hi. how did I get in here? Oh my goodness, the magic of, of, uh, of technology. <laughs> Camp Counselor Kayla, welcome back to Met Global Summer Camp. Thank you, Camp Counselor Dan. It's so good to be back. Oh my I gosh. love doing this every year. 
I'm so glad that you said yes. And I know our campers are too, because you always just, you've got like the most exciting arts and crafts for us. And I know today is no exception. Hi, Miss Kayla. Oh my gosh, Kravenko. Oh, Hi, Miss Kayla Juno. Oh my gosh, friends. Juno. So Much fun. Love. Welcome back from Dancing Cat. Oh my gosh. Aww. Hello, Miss Kayla. Oh. I think well, I remember Dancing Cat. This is Dancing oh, yeah. Cat 2.0. Okay. That's right. Yes, Dancing <laughs> Cat 2.0. Um, and we're so excited. Absolutely, friends. So, Kayla, we're going to get out of your way, but can you let me know a little bit about what, you're, uh, what you've cooked up for us today? Absolutely. And so my name is Kayla. You oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Miss Kayla. Oh, absolutely. Uh, she, her are my pronouns. Um, I'm wearing a dark green sweater over a brown tank top. Um, I have light skin, white skin, and short, not as short as uh, Camp Counselor Dan and Camp Counselor <laughs> Sophia, but above the shoulder length curly brown hair. Um, I'm calling from the Upper West Side in Manhattan, so some of you guys might be nearby. And I have a wicker screen background. Cool. Thank you. And thank you for remembering to do that. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, and so today we are making what exactly? Oh. Yes, so I was inspired by the character Parpignol. Uh, let's, I, I have a hard time saying that. I, I, I think I'm not alone in that. So maybe yeah. we can all take this opportunity in, in our own spaces on the count of three. We'll all say it together. One, two, three, Parpignol. Parpignol. There we go. We'll just own it. We'll get better yeah. the more we say it. <laughs> luckily, you know, luckily, Miss Kayla, Yes. In the opera, they sing the name like a thousand times That's over true. and over again. And in fact, I actually have a picture of the character Parpignol. Ooh. Should we take a look at that? Let's. I can bring it back later. <gasps> there he Ooh. is. And, and Parpignol, and there, and there is our beloved uh, opera donkey, now in retirement, Sir Gabriel the donkey, uh, who has, Sophia, you told me Sir Gabriel has been replaced by a new donkey whose name is... Wanda. Wanda the donkey. Mm, yes, Wanda, the donkey. we welcome you. Sir Gabriel, enjoy your retirement. You've earned it. You are a show donkey par excellence. All right. Um, I, I think we'll get out of here and just let you do what you do yeah, so well. Absolutely. So we'll see you at the end. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye, Kayla. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be back. As I was saying with Camp Counselor Dan, today I was inspired by the character Parping Yol, who's a toy maker. And so I thought it would be fun to make a puppet toy doll or a paper doll. So I have a little example here of one that I've already made. Hello. So he's kind of fun. He's very simple in construction, but it's kind of fun because his arms get to move. So I'll walk you through that whole mechanism this afternoon during our workshop. Um, before we get started, I know that you were given the materials list, but I want to give you a second to make sure you have everything you need. And of course, just a reminder that this will be recorded. So if you don't have everything today, you can watch, absorb in your, you know, get some of the prep parts done and you can always come back to it later and rewatch. That goes along with any other step today. Oh, good. I love how um, we have some spelling here for Parpignol, and we'll continue practicing <laughs> that pronunciation. So for today's puppet, um, make sure you have the following items. We're going to have a pencil, ideally sharpened, beep, beep, beep. and we need some scissors to use, um, some fuzzy sticks or pipe cleaners. Lovely. Oh, good. We have some banners. I might be going too fast. <laughs> I'll slow down. Some tape. I have some masking tape here. Um, something sharp like a safety pin to poke holes. Your pencil, if it's sharp enough, it might be able to do that as well. But I have these little safety pins here. And then we need a thicker piece of material like thin cardboard. A cereal box is a great example of the perfect type of thickness. And then some cardstock or printer paper, construction paper, something to design the puppet clothes. Yeah, index cards work great. It's kind of a little thicker than your normal paper. So I'll give everybody a minute to gather those things. And then also um, anything you want to decorate with. So I have some markers here. You can do pens, tissue paper stickers, uh, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you have available. And the, uh, the oh, it looks like buffering. Sorry if there's a little bit of lag. 
um, but hopefully it'll catch up to you guys. Um, so while we're gathering our materials, I wanted to see, um, it looks like there's people from all over the world, so many students in, in this year's camp. It's so exciting to have this accessible to many people outside of New York City. Um, go ahead and put in the comments section your favorite toy as a little bit of inspiration. Parpignol is a toy maker and we're gonna be making a paper toy, a paper doll. Does anybody know or have, has anybody played with a paper doll before? You can put it in the chat. You can also include your favorite toy in the chat too while we give everybody a chance to get their materials. And this is Parpignol. Lego, amazing. Yeah, those are classic. Keep playing with Legos. I still play with Legos. Excellent. Yep. And we got a reminder that the video will be on YouTube. So you can always do this activity when it's convenient for you. Play mobiles. Oh, interesting. Paper Barbie dolls for dress up. That's what's fun about a paper doll is that you can make different sets of clothing and change it out. And so they can have a different hat that day or a different shirt or different shoes or even different pants or skirts, whoever, whatever character you're making. Ooh, an inflatable toy boat. That's very fun. Is it life-size? Can you ride in the boat? <laughs> that would be very cool. All right. Well, let's get started because I want to make sure you guys have enough time to complete as much as you can of our toy puppet doll today. So we're going to start with your scissors and your thicker, oops, your thicker piece of cardboard, which reminds me, I just bumped into it. Uh, cam counselor Dan, can we turn the puppet cam on? There we go. The magic of television or, you know, in this case, StreamYard. So there's our little puppet. That's our finished product. I'm going to put them aside for the moment. And we're going to take our thicker piece of cardboard and our scissors. And I want you to measure about two, maybe actually let's do three fingers. And you can take your pencil or a pen and just mark a little dot there on one end. There we go. So I've got a little line. And then I'm going to do that on the other side of that long side, the long side of this paper. Make sure I have enough at least probably a hand's length, maybe a little bit more is what you want. So I'm just gonna cut this whole strip off. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna line it up with about this three fingers width of a strip of this cardboard. Because we want to save this section for later. I'm gonna put this bigger section to the side and I'm left with a three fingers width strip of, here we go, cardboard. All right, good. So now once you've got that, I want you to cut three sections, cut this into three sections. So not going to go halfway. I'm going to go a little bit closer to the edge, about one finger. You can kind of eyeball it. This doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to cut all the way along. And once you get that third section cut, you can just cut the second one, the what you have remaining, right in half. And so we should end up with three relatively equal thickness of our cardboard strips here. All right. So we should have three of those. I'll give you a moment to finish your cutting. Yeah, it looks like someone has a doll that they've made. Very cool. Still seeing some new other toys in the chat. We have some toy real race cars. Very exciting. I remember those cars when I was younger. When I played with those, those race cars, you pulled back and then you let go and the car went zooming. I don't know if they still make those. They're probably much cooler now. They probably have remote controls. <laughs> But I remember that. They're actually very fun to play with with cats, too, because the cats like to run and chase after them. Um, all right. So we have our three strips. We're going to put those to the side. We're going to just kind of prep the rest of our materials. And then grab a fuzzy stick. One of these pipe cleaners. The puppet cam is a little delayed, so just be aware of that. There we go. There's your fuzzy stick. 
So this fuzzy stick, I'll show you kind of the behind the scenes, the back of our puppet that we're making, right? So this is the mechanism that we're going to create to make Farpignol's arms move, all right? So we're gonna need one, two, three, four little cuts of the pipe cleaner. So I'm gonna take, we don't need big cuts, so I'm gonna probably take the pipe cleaner and fold it in half, like so, and then I'm gonna cut it in half. All right. And then from there, I'm gonna take one half, we'll have it extra if we need it, and I'm gonna fold that one half in half again, and cut that in half. So now we have two strips. You can see they're about a little longer than my thumb. And then from there, I'm gonna cut those two in half one more time. Right down the middle, like that and cut them in half. So pipe cleaners, I love them because they feel good to use because of the fuzzy bits, they don't hurt your fingers, and they're thin enough that you can cut right into them with scissors, but they're also really strong uses of materials for puppet joints, right? We call a joint anytime you can move your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your neck, those are all joints of the body that we have, and we also can build them into the puppets to make them move. All right, so. Let's go ahead and put those to the side next to our rods. So we have our three rods, our four little pipe cleaner joints. And now we're gonna go ahead and trace out our parpignol body. So that bigger piece of cardboard, we're still working with the thick material here. You're gonna set down and you're gonna trace a shape. I have this kind of pear shape of his body, right? I have kind of a big oval and a head. And then I attached his legs separately. So you can do that or you can trace the legs into the full shape. So I'll do this with you. You can grab a pen or pencil. And I'm gonna draw a circle at the top for the head. Yeah, and then I'm gonna kind of almost like a bowling pin. I'm gonna kind of go out to create a little shoulder. And then his torso is gonna come in a little bit like so. And then I'm gonna try and do about the same thing on the other side. You can do whatever shape you feel inspired to make. All right, even it out a little bit. There we go. And then to connect it together like so kind of like a snowman with just one big section and then a head instead of three. Although you can do three sections if you want to. So from there, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut out the shape of the body. I'm gonna cut along the line that I just drew. Nice and simple. Cool. Looks like everyone is doing pretty well so far in the chat. Cutting around the head. There we go. I also saw a really interesting toy mentioned in the chat. What was it? Oh, yeah, a teddy bear. It's classic. There's that Build-A-Bear Workshop. Anybody familiar with Build-A-Bear Workshop? It's actually a really cool store for buying clothing for puppets too <laughs> because everything's all miniature. And so I remember when I worked at a puppet kitchen, it was called the Puppet Kitchen, and it was a studio for making and building and designing puppets. We used Build-A-Bear Workshop quite a bit to buy um, puppet clothes. It was a little bit easier and faster sometimes than making them from scratch. So there's my little body. All right, so before we put the arms and the joints on the body, we're gonna take this, we just kind of created this stencil and we're gonna take our paper or our heart card stock. And if you're using index cards, you can use one index card for the, the lower half because what we're gonna make is the clothing and then another index card for the upper half. All right, so what I'm gonna do 
I'll show you. Basically going to trace. I, use, I like to use these file folders because it's a nice way to get card stuff. Um, and I'm going to trace the outer side of the body just to kind of get the shape and the dimensions. Like that. And I leave a little space for the head. And then this is where you get to be a costume designer. You get to decide what you want to wear. So if you see my finished prepping that I, I made him a little vest, right? And little trousers, okay? And I, I just colored all of this with marker. So you could do whatever you want to do. So let's see here. Maybe I'm gonna do overalls. So I'm gonna draw little straps here and here, and they connect in the center like that. And then they go around, there's space for the arms here, right? And then there's usually a band across the waist. And then there's the little seam for the legs. So there's the basic shape of the top and the bottom. You can do, you don't have to make a uh, Parpignol man, you can make a woman, you can make anyone, or anyone could wear a dress or a skirt. You get to use your creative uh, powers here. So you get to decide what your character is wearing. So I'm going to then take my scissors, or I can even just set this aside for now. We'll cut this out later. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. It's just easier to do it while before the puppet has arms on it. And now we're going to get into probably the, the part that is a little bit more technical, takes a little bit of time, a little bit of dexterity. Does anybody know what that word dexterity means? If, as you look it up, I'll give you a little hint. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I'm so glad you're having fun already. But basically, dexterity is hand skills, movement, details, and getting really specific working with our hands. Um, all right, so we're going to make this joint that I was telling you about. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one of our long rods and we're gonna cut it right in half. These are gonna be his arms. So you can even fold it in half so you know that you're balanced, right? That you're really in half and you're gonna cut right on that fold so that you have two pieces of equal length, all right? just like that. I'll give you a moment. All right. So now, once you have that made, you're going to take another one and cut it in half again, just like you did the first time. And that's going to be the other joint here, okay? So we have our four pieces ready to be joined together. All right, now this is the point where you take your safety pin or something sharp. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take these first two pieces, I'm gonna try and show it, and we're gonna overlap corner to corner. So you see how you don't wanna have some part showing, you wanna line up those edges so they make a point, just like that. And so once you have it lined up, you kind of pinch it closed with one hand, and you're gonna take that little sharp end of the safety pin right in the center. You can even draw a dot if you want, right in the middle, kind of helps you. There's the dot, let's see if you can see. There we go. And you're gonna take the safety pin and put it right through that dot. Try and get through both pieces. Be careful on the other side that you don't hit, uh, poke your other finger, right? Leave enough space kind of wiggle it through, there we go. So you see it went through the other end there. It's a little thin, it's hard to see, you can kind of see my hand. There it is, good. And then I'm gonna take it out. And then I'm going to take my little puppet body and kind of eyeball, you want the arms to start just beneath the head. Yes, absolutely, these can be sharp, even though they're called safety pins, the ends are still sharp and they can poke you. So a sharpened pencil, depending on how thick your cardboard that you're working with, that can also work and it's a little safer. Um, a hole punch is a little too big. Otherwise, normally I like to use hole punches to make holes, um, but for what we're using, we need a smaller little hole here. 
So now in the center, just below the head, you're going to poke another hole into the body here, right into the body. There we go. Good. They're so small, you won't really read on the camera. But what I'm going to do is now take my sharpened pencil and make the hole a little bigger just by pushing the tip of the pencil through the hole that I've already created. Yeah, maybe you have to go through both sides. I think I need to make the sleeve to fit a little bit more. There we go. And then you can see the hole's a little bigger. It'll be easier to get that pipe cleaner through. If a pencil's not sharp enough, you can use the end of a pen too and poke it through. There we go. So now you can see that hole. And then you want to do that on these two ends as well. Poke it through. Whoop. I think the pencil works a little better. There we go. And poke it through. Okay, so you should have three pieces with the holes in them. One, two, three. Now you take one of your little pipe cleaners. And you're going to take one of the rods, go ahead and put the pipe cleaner through it. And then you take the other rod and you put the pipe cleaner through that. And you want to kind of create this little X shape. So I'll pause and show you. This is what it should look like, like an L, kind of like an, a letter A. And you should have pipe cleaner going through both of them. And then you put that last piece through the puppet hole itself. So now all three pieces are connected. Now this is the fun part about using pipe cleaners. You see how the pipe cleaners between all of them? I mean, this is a good angle to see. Now kind of imagine a little caterpillar kind of curling up in a ball to go to sleep. You're gonna take one end of the pipe cleaner and you're just gonna coil it just in a little coil like it's gonna go to sleep. And you just kind of spin it like a pinwheel pinching with your fingers until it's in a nice little, like a cinnamon roll, right? You make a little cinnamon roll out of that pipe cleaner. There you go. And then you do that on the other side too. And what that does is it secures this in place. So I'm just moving that pipe cleaner around like a little cinnamon roll. There we go. So that's how it should look on the back. They should be able to move. And then on the front, you have a little button right under his nose. Okay. Now, once you've done this first step, the next two steps are basically the same process, just repeated with the other joints, the other piece of this, what we call umbrella mechanism. And I'll give you a little sample of why it's called an umbrella mechanism. You push the, the umbrella up and it opens, and then you pull it down and it closes, right? So it's the same mechanism that an umbrella uses. Pretty cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and put together the handle of the umbrella. So you can take this long piece and you're gonna, actually, let's just keep it. You might wanna trim it later, but we'll keep it long for now. And your two other short pieces that you cut in half. And we're going to do a very similar thing that we did the first time. We're going to create this joint, this L shape, putting the corners together just like that. And we're going to poke the hole right through the center. So I'm going to take my pen and draw another hole, a dot right in the middle where those two points meet. There it is. And I'm going to take my safety pin and I'm going to carefully either poke through myself or ask an adult for help. There's only couple more holes to poke throughout. Just kind of wiggle it through until it goes through both sides. There it is. And I'm going to kind of wiggle it to kind of make it the hole nice and open. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the top of my long piece here. I would leave a little bit of space and put that hole. I'll draw, I'll draw a mark to kind of see where it should be right at the top with a little bit of space above it and take my safety pin and do the same thing, poke that hole through the safety pin. 
There it is. Okay. And then I'm going to take my pencil again and make the hole a little bigger. And I'm making it a little firmer. This pencil's not as sharp as the one I was using the other day. Yeah, I have a pencil sharpener. Let's see if this helps without breaking it. Okay, I think that helped a little bit. Let's see if that sharpened it. Oh yeah, it's important to use good tools. So if you have a pencil sharpener, make sure your pencils are nice and sharp. Poking right through now, making those holes just a little bigger, a little easier to work with. Puncture right through, look at that, so satisfying. Okay, so very similar now. We're going to create more of a Y shape. So you're gonna take another one of your fuzzy, uh, Fuzzy, fuzzy sticks, as they're called, or pipe cleaners. And you're going to put one through the first short piece. Mm -hmm. Pull it through. There we go. Too fast, I know. Well, I'll give time to repeat. We are making good time, so I can definitely slow down. Thank you for the feedback, fast second laugh, five second laughs. And then the other piece, I'll pause after we do these three pieces together. But this is the same step as before, right? We're doing the same thing. And this is kind of creating more of a Y shape. And then the long piece with the hole, we'll put that as well with this pipe cleaner. I'll take a pause after this step and I'll take any questions and review the steps we've done so far. Oh, historical Aniket, thank you so much. I'm so glad you loved the Queen of the Nights puppet. That was, I think, the first summer we did this camp uh, virtual. And it was so fun to see everyone's performances of and their Queen of the Night puppets. Um, that was one of my favorites for sure. It was a lot of fun. Last year, if you guys were here, we did, um, it was also Magic Flute, just like Queen of the Night. That's who that character's from. And we did the bird catcher, Papa J Papa Gano, and it was we made little pinwheel puppets. With, uh, they were birds, so that was fun. If anyone was here last summer, oh, dancing cat! I knew I remembered you. You you were there that summer, and you still have your Queen of the Night puppet. I love it. That is wonderful. I actually still have my Queen of the Night puppet. Maybe if there's enough room, I don't know where, where she is right now. She's somewhere with all my other puppets having a nap. Uh, we'll see if we have time, maybe I'll dig her out and she can make a little cameo appearance for La Boheme. We can have all of these characters meeting each other. It'll be chaos. <laughs> all right, so hopefully that's given you some time to catch up. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Historical Anakette. I think you guys are all amazing. Um, so I have my Y and I'm gonna do that same kind of cinnamon roll kind of just twirling it. Let's see if I can give you a better angle. So I've kind of flattened it and I'm just gonna coil it around itself, almost like a little snake. If any of you guys are afraid of snakes, I'm sorry in advance, <laughs> but these are friendly snakes. They're like little caterpillars. There you go. And then it's in a nice tight little knot and you can do the other side too so that it stays put and that you don't have the sharp end of the pipe cleaner poking out. Little cinnamon roll action, there you go. And as long as it moves and it stays put, it really doesn't matter what you do to get that pipe cleaner in place. So this is where we are so far. I'll take a little break. If anyone has any questions as you catch up, at this point we should have the three short pieces, the two short pieces attached to the body. And then we should have the other two short pieces attached to the third long piece. <laughs> You're making me hungry for cinnamon rolls. Yes, me too. Uh, that is my favorite dessert, actually. Maybe that's probably why I <laughs> uh, included it as an example. Do I like the magic flute? Oh, Gwen Chan. So we've got some conversation going here around the magic flute. It was such a, that's one of my favorite operas. There's so many, speaking of, puppets that can often be utilized in that show because you have the bears and the birds and you know the spirits, the fates, the three fates, and it's just such a whimsical opera. 
um, but it is one of my favorites, especially the Met production, the one that was directed by Julie Taymor, who you may not know her name, but I'm sure you've probably heard of The Lion King, the Broadway musical, and she also helped to direct and design the puppets in The Lion King. So it's a very, puppetry kind of shows up in a lot of different ways. All right, yeah. The big bear puppets were pretty amazing, especially if you got to see them in person. They were amazing virtual. I can only imagine what they were like in real life on stage. Oh, Dancing Cat saw the Lion King. Very exciting. It's so nice to start to have the theater come back in person, the opera and events. We're very, very lucky this summer to be having some more shows. As, Dan, as Camp Counselor Dan pointed out, I did a show that involved me wearing a backpack that was attached to a seven foot tall body. I had his legs drapped over my body and it was a puppet version of Andy Warhol, which is a famous artist, modern artist. So you, if you've ever seen a painting of a Campbell's soup can, that's by Andy Warhol. So fun little facts here. All right, I do want to keep moving. Again, you always have the opportunity to go back and record. This will be recorded on YouTube so you can catch up. Um, we're Now the next step is to put these two joints together. We're almost done with the hard part and then we get to do the fun decorating. All right, so for this joint, what you want to do is you want the connection point of these ends to be closer to the body. You don't want it to be too far out here um, because then it won't be able to lift as high. So the closer you have in, the higher the arms will go and the more movement you'll have. So what I like to do is at least the halfway point, maybe even slightly closer so that it's within the frame of the body. Okay, so the reason I say that is this is the, this is the easy measuring tool. Once you kind of figure out where you want them, you're going to bring the top ones together, overlap, and then you're going to draw a little hole about, let's say, again, not halfway, but a little closer to this, to that first little cinnamon roll fuzzy, right about there. Okay, you see my dot? That's where I'm going to make my holes in this puppet. So I'm going to take the safety pin again. I swear you're gonna love safety pins by the end of this. You're gonna get so good at using them. <laughs> now I'm gonna put that safety pin right through. I'm trying to do both at the same time, just so that I know that they're, uh, they're exactly even. That's the only tricky part is that it's a little thicker, it's a little harder to do two at once, but you can do it, especially with the help of an adult. So it made it through. And I'm going to do the similar measurement on this one. So again, I'm gonna, this one though is gonna be further up. So not halfway, but a little closer to the top on the opposite side of the fuzzy cinnamon roll. And I'm gonna draw a little dot, okay? If you're not sure, doing the halfway mark is probably a good safe bet. So if you're not sure, if you're a little confused depending on where the dots are, you can always just go right in the middle and you'll be good to go no matter what. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm putting them, see they're both together. I have one over the other. I'm putting them together and almost done. This is our last hole to make. Last little hole. There it is. Got it through and pull it out. Good, and then as always, I'm gonna take my sharpened pencil and I'm gonna make those holes a little bigger. Make them a little bigger. There we go. And same thing with these two. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And I'm gonna make this one a little bigger. There we go. So I've got four more holes. So we're almost there. I'll give you a moment to finish the holes. I've got lots of practice. Gwen Chan, yes, you know, it was hard to walk in. Um, most of it was balance because it was almost, if you've ever seen a stilt walker and having to balance on the tall stilt stilts, it was almost the opposite. I had the really tall, heavy weight above me 
that was kind of pulling me in all these directions. So it took some time to practice with my balance and that core strength. Cam Counselor Dan mentioned I teach Pilates and Pilates is known for giving core strength. So it was perfect. Um, I was ready for it. I was conditioned. If you've ever performed on stage, you know how physically demanding it is. We're actors and dancers are like athletes. We have to stay in shape. We have to train. We have to practice. Um, so it was definitely something I had to practice. But then, you know, after a certain amount of time, it just became muscle memory. And I could walk all the way down Third Avenue with the, that giant puppet on. <laughs> it was very fun. All right. Yes, the Lion King is still running, definitely in New York City. There might be some tours. I, I think it was in London for a little while as well. That is also, also could still be running in London. All right, so four holes. Let's put together our final joint here. All right, I'm gonna actually trim a little bit of mine above it just because it was a little on the long side there. There we go, okay. So that way when I put them attached, they're not sticking out. All right, our last little caterpillars, gonna take one of them and put it through just two holes this time. So you're doing one side of the Y and then the other side of the arm of the puppet. And you're gonna do your cinnamon roll. I know by the end of this, we all need to go to Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts and get some cinnamon rolls. Anybody have a favorite donut place or bakery that they like to go to? You can put it in the chat. I love Dunkin' Donuts myself. All right, so there's one. You can see how it's all coming together, that umbrella action. We're only one caterpillar away from it being a movable manipulation, a movable puppet. All right, one caterpillar in one end and then put it through the hole. And then I do my cinnamon roll swirls, my little baby snakes on either end, just coiling up in a little ball, little spiral. Ooh, great harvest cinnamon rolls. Oh, that sounds good. I don't know if they have a great harvest in New York City, but I think I've, had, I've visited some in other parts of the country. The Rainbow Bakery sounds totally my jam. Wah, wah. wah. Victoria, you must be from Pennsylvania or New Jersey because that's I know where Wawa's are. Tim Hortons, that's classic. Yeah, tall. So as you're working, this is kind of what you're aiming for. Once you, it's like magic. Once you get those little puppets in there, those little cinnamon rolls, those caterpillars, you've got a working arm. And so here I'll show you on the regular cam. This is what it looks like from the front. Yay. Oh, here we go. Hi. Hello, hello. And you can kind of do one arm and then the other arm. Hello, hello. You go, Y-M-C-A, <laughs> something like that. All right. And if you feel like you want to make the arms longer, you can always tape little hands to it or arm extensions. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different options. This is the basic mechanic there. Now, sometimes what I like to do, depending on the thickness, you know, it is so cool, Sanjeev, right? Uh, my, my mentor who taught me how to make puppets always said, the first 80% of making a puppet, it doesn't look like anything. But in that last 20%, it all comes together and it, it really feels like magic, honestly. So you got to just stay with it, go step by step. And then by the end of it, you have something pretty magical. So if you, this, you know, this is kind of, it's pretty sturdy, but with your hands, it might get a little worn down over time. So I like to take this pencil that we've been working with once you're done finished working with it. And I will glue the pencil to the end of the rod just to kind of um, make it a little more stable or not glue, I um, take tape. So I'll go ahead and do that step really quick and then we'll get to the decorating part, which that's something we'll do together here, but you can keep doing for as long as you want. You can make different sets of costumes for this puppet to play different characters. You can even make multiple puppets for multiple characters and perform your very own reenactment of La Boheme if that's something you're thinking of doing, maybe for the camper showcase. Lots of different ways. So I'm gonna take a nice long strip of tape. I'm gonna put my pencil, the sharp end up, and I'm gonna just tape it all around the front and I'm gonna kind of go around 
and secure it. And you can do a couple more pieces down, one in the middle and then one at the end. And that'll just give you a more, um, a stronger control rod is what we call that. Trust the process, Tall. Yes. Oh no, your project is crumbling into ruin. Well, the good news is, you know, this was actually, this is the third time I'm making this puppet for you today. It took me a few times of trial and error myself. And that is part of the process. It is frustrating, but when have you ever gotten anything right on the very first try? Very few things in life, I can imagine, at least for me anyway. I have to try a few times before I get what I really want, that finished product. Okay, I'm gonna tape that pencil around. And now you have, with that pencil attached, you have a little bit more of a sturdier control rod to work from. And then see, I'm holding down here that I left a little bit of the eraser at the very end so I could hold the eraser. And I have that here. All right, so take your time finishing up, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of um, headway on the decoration part to wrap up so that we can see a little bit of a finished product. So again, here is the one I made last night. I cut a little face and decorated it. I cut out a little hat. I have the shirt and the pants and even little shoes. You can see little boots that I made him. And I even colored the arms so that they matched the shirt and kind of brought it all together. So you can do any of those things. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a little face and make his overalls and you can go with me today too. And again, if you're still working, you can always put that part down, take a break and work on the clothing and come back to the, the, the you know, the um, construction when you have time to stop and pause and stop and pause. All right, I'm gonna make a little head about the size, trace his head here. I get a little sense of the shape of the head. There we go. All right, let's see here. This is where the creative juice is. You can make your artistic choices. Okay. This is his overalls. I like marker because it really kind of creates a nice strong line of color. You can use whatever decoration materials you see fit. Well, let's see, I think they're gonna be striped overalls. Maybe X's, little checkered shape pattern here. There we go. Maybe there is a, since 4th of July is coming, I guess I'm feeling inspired with a little bit of red, white, and blue. Gonna do some red buttons here. There we go. Third button. And I'm gonna do a little red pocket over here. There we go. And then maybe I'll do the red belt as well. It might be fun. Go across and then go back to his lower half here. Do some denim jeans. <laughs> this is the casual Parpignol <laughs> when he's, he's taking his day off and he's not selling toys. This is his leisure wear. <laughs> so now maybe he'll wear a straw hat see if I can draw a straw hat this is when looking up pictures online doing a little image google image search is helpful but I'm going to just try and draw a straw hat from, from memory Ooh, dancing cat has a flowery skirt and pink pants very cool all right Straw hat. There we go. 
see my process here. Here we go. Pretty good. And I'm going to give him a face. Let's see. Maybe I have a happy carpenial, so I'm going to do kind of a more sad face carpenial to give a different character expression. Mm -hmm. Got to have his clown makeup on. Mm -hmm. And his little clown cheeks. There we go. And then once I have those decorated, I'm just going to cut them out. So since I made overalls, I'm gonna keep this as one solid piece, but you can cut the skirt out separate, cut right across and have two pieces that you work from. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it all out. And I'm gonna cut along the blue part here so that I leave space. This is just the clothing. And so I leave space for the rest of the puppet I'm gonna do this for now and then I'm gonna cut in, right? And just cutting the actual costume out, right? You'll see a little bit clearer what I mean by that once I put the costume on the puppet. And uh, more traditional paper dolls had little tabs, which I tried to make, they don't work great. So we're just gonna use masking tape, which you can take on and off. Um, but you just pinch the little tabs around and you could kind of just put the clothing on and they'd sort of hang there and then you could take it off really easily and switch to a different outfit. So it's kind of the inspiration for today. So I have a pair of overalls. Let's see if they'll fit. Carpignol, we're going shopping. Yeah, looks great. So then I'm going to put those on with a little bit of my masking tape. And I like masking tape because it doesn't leave a residue, so you can take it on and off very easily. Ooh, we've got a, someone's making a cat. We have someone with denim. Oh, I cut out two pieces. There we go. With denim shorts and a yellow t-shirt and brown hair. A mini me. Ah, oh, that's kind of fun to make a little puppet doll version of yourself. Or your cat. Good. So I put on some tape and I'm going to tape it to the body of my puppet. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the face and the hat. I'm going to cut those out. Ooh, removable hair. I like that. So you can change the hairstyle. It's fun to look at pictures of the character in La Boheme. It's very colorful, very clown like. Um, I'm sure if you guys are veterans of the Met Summer Opera Camp that you learn different archetypes of different characters. Yeah, so sometimes the, there's a clown character, the comedic character is known as the fool and they are dressed like a very, very colorful and um, very bright and sort of silly and they have a little bit of that clown makeup and it sort of tells the audience Oh, this is sort of a fun, silly, lighthearted character. Uh, so that's, I think, my interpretation of Parpignol in the in La Boheme, um, that he's a character that brings joy, right, through the through bringing toys to the town. All right, and that's kind of fun because we can make we can turn that into any type of clown or fool that we want. <laughs> oh, poor Parpignol kind of sad there but even that's kind of what make clowns funny in a way all of their emotions all right I'm gonna cut out the straw hat and then we're gonna have a little moment and discover this new character that we've made and stay tuned in the last few minutes I know camp counselor Dan wants to make an announcement and if you haven't already streamed 
LabOM. I think they're going to make sure that that's available to you as well. So you can watch the scene for yourself. There's a whole song about this character. All right, here's the hat. I'm going to get some tape. There we go. How's everyone doing? <laughs> baby shark. I want a baby penguin. Lots. I love all the creativity in this room, in this virtual space. All right. Just like that. We've got, oh, over here. A new character. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh it's Joke O'Clock. Did, did someone say joke o'clock? Is that what it's called or no? That's what it's called. No, oh, you said okay. it right. I just was, I was like waiting for it. And I was like, is it going to happen today? I didn't, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. Okay, let me see. Let's go through my joke file here. I felt like the Parpignol puppet you just created would be a good person to read these jokes. What do you think? Yes, All I right. think it's a great idea. Okay, let's start with, okay, let's start with Sean from Orlando, Florida, USA. Why did the cow, oh, sorry, you read it. Oh. Why did the cow cross the road? I don't know, Parpignol. Why did the cow cross the road? To listen to Mozart music. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty, funny. That's pretty funny. All right, good job. Good job, Sean. I'm always so stunned by these. Sorry for not laughing hard enough, everyone. All right, here we go. This is from our friend Sviatoslav in Kiev, Ukraine. Hit it. What is the most important part of Bohemian history? Oh, this is a okay. Wow, very this one, I know. <laughs> quiche. This is a joke from yesterday's lesson because we learned how to make quiche. <laughs> ah, I love quiche. Quiche is all the chicken's eggs. It was a quiche that taught us the uh, the story of La Boheme. Who knew who knew quiche could do so much? Okay, let's see. Oh, this is a good one from Shivangana, who I know is here today, from Shivangana in Muscat, Oman. Okay, here we go, Shivangana. Hit it, Parpignol. Which kitchen utensil can play classical music? This one's good. The chopping board. The chopping board. I get it. I get it. That's fun. <laughs> okay, and one more from Dancing Cat 2.0. Spoiler, it's a cat joke. From Ben in Monroe, Connecticut, USA. Why are cats great singers? Because they're very musical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these jokes are so good. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for a great joke o'clock. We needed that. I'm so glad we waited for, uh, for Parpignol there. That was really fun. <laughs> yes, that was intentional. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, Ms. Kayla, while you were teaching and we were having this great discussion about this puppet, I went through and dug up this photo of you um, as the Andy Warhol puppet. There you are. There oh I am. Goodness, it's amazing. Pretty amazing, right? You can kind of see me. I'm his belly button way down there. How big oh my gosh, you are his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew Andy Warhol had a talking belly button with such great hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Shivangana is loving this. So. <laughs> so fun. Oh my gosh. I love that we, that I found that. Yes, I'm um, so glad you did. Oh my gosh. And I love this lesson too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah. it with us. Um, I want to get Camp Counselor Sophia back in here too. Hey, Camp Counselor Sophia. How are you? Oh, you're muted. Um, Got it. <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you all so much. Kayla, I don't know how your brain works, but you come up with the most creative arts and crafts ever. <laughs> Um, so good. So good. Yeah. So friends, for the rest of our day today, we are going to uh, take a quick break and then we are going to pop back into uh, the, uh, the live stream with Mr. Aaron's music. And Mr. Aaron is going to bop around. We're going to have a good time dancing and singing with him. That starts at 1.30 on YouTube and Facebook Live. Um, you can find the link in the Google Classroom or it's probably just popping up on the... Um, on the YouTube right now. 
So join us for that. Mr. Aaron is the best. I know we love Mr. Aaron. He's so fun. Okay. Now, one thing I want to remind everyone is that tomorrow we have this amazing opportunity to meet Lucas Meacham, who is a singer, who is a veritable star of the Met Opera stage. And Lucas Meacham is going to be in our artist chat corner tomorrow, chatting with me. And we need your questions. Lucas wants to hear from you. So go into the Google Classroom. Um, there are links being provided for you. Get those links. Shoot us those video questions. Oh, there they are. Oh, thanks, Sophia. Did you just put those in the chat for everyone? Thank you, thank you. Go to those forms, upload some questions for him. And I wanted to show you, you know, Lucas is a really funny, fun guy. And I wanted to show you some, Lucas has great social media. So let's take a look at these clips of Lucas uh, backstage uh, in La Boheme. Here we go. I want to take you all on a little walk that is probably the most special walk of my entire career because it's a walk to the stage that I always dreamed of performing on when I was a young singer. And uh, on my way, and now I get to go out on this amazing stage. Yes, of course, I'm talking about the Metropolitan Opera here. And I get to go through this walk backstage, these hallowed halls, that hallowed drilling, <laughs> and I get to go on stage and sing here it is just it still it still gets me it still hits me right here there's not a moment that i take this walk that i feel not just in awe of being able to be here so new york city i'm so happy to be back thanks for having me challenge with the cast of love i want to Oh my gosh, I think Lucas Meacham looks like so much fun. Please, please, please submit your questions for Lucas. We're gonna have a great time with him tomorrow um, at noon. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're gonna meet with our friend, Ms. Gussie Celestana. We're gonna talk about music, music, music. So everyone go grab a quick snack. Thank Miss Kayla for this amazing puppet that we've all just created together. Thank you, Miss Kayla. You're amazing. And um, we will see you all in a few short minutes uh, at 1.30 p.m. Eastern New York City time with Mr. Aaron. All right, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Kayla. Thank you thank so much. You. Oh, see thank you, everyone. Saskia. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you soon. All right.